Transmission lines are actually transmitting your data. One would think that these structures only transmit electricity for power, but they actually serve a secondary function too. The crazy thing is, they are actually three ways that this innocent looking transmission tower is sending and communicating data. First, there is the PLC, not a programmable logic controller, but a power line carrier. In 1910, analog voice signal is modulated in power lines as an initial test by the American military. In layman term, they were having a phone call using a power line. Yes, transmission lines supported phone calls. It functions on a similar principle as radio, where a high-frequency audio signal is modulated or injected into a carrier signal from one point. Then it is sent out. The receiver will get the whole package, but you need to filter out the message. In practice, the PLC transceiver signals are coupled to the power lines through this coupling device which also has a task of filtering out power signals in the case of AC power lines and other noise. And in the 1930s, PLC technology was mature, allowing the transmission of telephonic signals over power lines. The advantage? This configuration proved to be efficient and economical. Basically, it's just cheap because it uses pre-existing power lines. The things that are already there. You don't need to build new infrastructure or assets for purely communication purposes. This is decreasing its deployment cost. The disadvantage, it is very susceptible to noise and the speed is not that great. That's why next we look at the OPGW. The OPGW stands for Optical Ground Wire. First introduced in 1977, OPGW is a dual functioning asset. It is designed with the dual purpose of having the earth wires on the overhead transmission lines and the added benefits of containing optical fibers inside the earth shield wire, which then can be used for telecommunication purposes. This is a totally different animal from the PLC. PLCs modulate an analog signal onto a carrier. This is straight up fiber optic, like 100101000100101101. Digital, you know? Fast internet. Vroom vroom. Having the fiber optic up in the air has several advantages compared to having fiber optic cables that are buried in the ground. One, your installation cost per kilometer is actually lower than the buried ones. Communication lines carried by the OPGW overhead cables are unlikely to be damaged by excavation work, road repairs, installation of buried pipelines, and all those things to do with digging. Having the fiber optics so near to high voltage transmission towers also doesn't have much negative impacts or drawbacks. Effectively, the fiber optic circuit is protected from accidental contact by high voltage cables below. Since the fiber optic is already inside the earth shield wire, it is protected. The OPGW's overall dimensions and weight are similar to those of a normal ground wire, so there isn't much changes. That's why the overall tower supporting the transmission line is not overburdened by the weight of the cable, the wind loads, and also the ice loads. Like, but some may ask, isn't this earth wire supposed to be conducting high current lightning strikes? Is it a good design to put the fiber optics to a place where it is supposed to take the lightning hit? As the signals in the fiber cables are optical signals, lightning discharge doesn't really affect that because lightning discharge are electrical signals. What's more important is that the metal casing around the fiber optic, that is the bottleneck. Arc sweeping damages, melting damages, abrasion damages, if the lightning discharge can be grounded well, the risk is actually quite well managed. An alternative to OPGW is just to separate out the fiber optic and the earth shield wire. And that's why we have ADSS. The all dielectric self-supporting cable is a type of optical fiber cable that is strong enough to support itself. <laughs> strong enough to support itself between structures without using conductive metal elements. The AD in ADSS stands for all dielectric, meaning no conductive material. The ADSS is an alternative to the OPGW with a lower installation cost, mainly because you don't have to insert it between some meshed up aluminum conductors. They are usually at the middle of the transmission tower, right here, protected by all these current carrying conductors, as well as the earth shield wire on top. They're still fiber optic, very much digital and very much high speed. 
The OPGW has better set characteristics because there's like tensile strength support from the metallic earth wire. And the OPGW is much better for mountainous areas and areas with large height differences between the towers. However, the ADSS has better ice covered overload capacity. And then there is this OPPC, which is basically putting the fiber optic inside the current carrying conductor because of an absence of a ground wire. My god, what the f*** is wrong with these people, man? You're watching the Funsi channel. Do, 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 do.